<laughs> do you do you feel <laughs> do you feel empowered? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Sochi Land. <laughs> So, do you ever do like drag or have you ever? That would be really fun. Sink, sunk, sink it. Okay, ragdolls. That was a crazy practice session. You guys fucking rock. Oh, thank um, you. If you guys would like to like look over the camera and then maybe from Shezzy over, like say your name and then at the same time you guys could like say and we're ragdolls or something. Well, hey, my name's Shezzy. I play drums and ragdolls. I have Naomi on vocals and guitar. I'm Rachel on bass. Oh, yeah. Rag dolls. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then uh, um, spiritually, uh, Logan. Oh, yes. Logan yeah. Is here in spirit. Yep. Yeah. Logan on says he's literally like really high up in the air right now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how high up back here. airplanes are. Yeah, high in the there. sky, it's apple pie. <laughs> nice. Final destination. Um, so, ragdolls, first thing that I really wonder about and I have not learned, uh, where does your name come from? Is there, like, a story behind it? Oh, uh, well, it came, we figured it out maybe, like, uh, it was one me and, it was first me and Shezzy, and we're trying to think of a name to put down for the depot and stuff. And um, I have always been into, like, kind of creepy dolls and stuff, and, like, nice. that whole aesthetic, like, my lock screen on my phone is, like, these, like, creepy dolls. My students always ask what they are, and I'm always like, oh, I don't know, they're just cool. And my home screen, too. But I just like the whole aesthetic, like, uh, so you were like brag dolls and stuff, and then we changed it to a Z to make it more edgy. <laughs> oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. It's yeah. pretty awesome. So when the band started, was were all four of you already together, or did, like, the members shift over time at all? Oh, that's funny, because the wall... I met Naomi and we were, she, she wanted to start a band. I was like, I want to help us start a band together. And I was like, I, I'm going to play drums for this band. And we were looking um, for a bassist. We wanted a female bassist. We were looking, we didn't know who. And then we were talking to our friend Samir. Shout out to Samir, you're awesome. Um, uh, he's like, God just like knows everyone, not. knows the connects. And then he was like, why don't you hit up Rachel? And I was like, yeah, you're right. I know Rachel from the depot, like playing there. Uh, Rachel and Logan both came out and then, yeah, uh, Rachel and Logan came to practice with us. I was like, yeah, like, this is like the full force going yeah. on right now, so. Nice. So then, so like around what time was that? Like, like a few months ago, like a year ago? Well, we met, end up, we met at a Halloween show at, so it was like the 29th, 30th or something um, of October. And then probably like beginning of December or something we were on um, playing like, yeah. And uh, first it was like three of us, then we added um, Logan as um, Sin. And, yeah. And pretty recent. Yeah, pretty wow. recent. Yeah. Nice. So Rachel, how long have, have you known Logan for? Um, we're going to have our fifth anniversary in September. So, hey, yeah. that's awesome. Wow. Um, so I've known him for six years. Wow. So where did you guys meet originally? College. College. Yeah. Did you like meet because of music or was it something else? Uh, we met through like a mutual friend and then he overheard me like say that I played bass. Or actually no, I never was playing guitar. Um, and then he just like immediately was like, let's go play something. So we immediately went and like hung out and started playing, making music together. Oh, cool. Yeah. So do you have like music anywhere from like uh, before Ragdolls? Yeah, yeah. We started, Logan and I started a band with uh, one of our roommates back in college and uh, we called it Knit. Oh, and cool. um, 
we're, we've put out like one EP and a few um, like singles on Spotify, but we're, I think we're going to like rebrand for okay. the stuff we're working on right now. Nice. Yeah. yeah, speaking of, of knitting, earlier I saw you have a very special skill. <laughs> you want to maybe talk a little bit about your special skill? Um, right now I'm a full-time artist, so I do a lot of crochet and knit work. Um, so basically just like an all-around fiber artist. Um, I work a lot with like thrifted yarn and different materials, so I try to be really sustainable. Yeah, damn. That's so badass, dude. Lucid knits. Yeah, Lucid knits. She's wearing one right now. Yeah, she. Yeah. That's on. That's like. That's fucking cool. Um. So like, I, I know Shezzy, You have been in other bands and stuff. Um. What are the other bands that you have been or like are currently a part of right now? So I'm um, also sing and play guitar and cat sensei. Uh, we also use the space, uh, this practice room as well. That's been a thing since. Say a little over a year now. When I met Javi, I met him through a mutual friend, and we just instantly connected and decided to do the band thing. And we moved in together and everything. And you know, things have been forming in Baltimore, and we got like a full lineup now. And Cat Sensei and Ragdolls actually have a show coming up pretty soon, May 19th, at the Reverb. It's gonna be sick. There's gonna be a music video shot there. Come be a part of it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it's going to be a song released, too, so stay tuned. Ooh. Yeah. Which song are you guys releasing? Callus. Yeah. When I was out one, that goes... Callus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, have, like, you been in any other bands, or are you doing any other kind of musical projects? Yeah. No, honestly, like, um, before Shazzy, I was kind of a little more, like, closed off and, like, nervous to share my things. I feel like Shazzy brought me a lot out of, um, out of my shell. Like, we went to, like, a jam session once, and I remember I was, like, really nervous because, like, it was, like, all guys and stuff, and I was the only girl there. I'm, like, just little old me, and then he's, like, no, go take the guitar, and then so, like, took the guitar, and, like, there's a time, the first time we played together, where it was at that, um, that pizza place where the coffee shop, or... Oh, the uh, coffee shop. Yeah, Chart City. Yeah. Yeah. First time we played Ragdolls, I was playing yeah. bass. There's a drum kit, and I just grabbed oh, the bass cool. there because yeah. I like knew like the covers we were doing. Yeah, it was just two covers. So. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That was kind of like the start. Yeah, it was like, was oh wow, we got some spicy going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's pretty special. That's like all those Disney stories where it's like, I grabbed a napkin and I drew down a picture. And it's like I grabbed yeah. the bass and we were at a Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And Naomi's super brave. I mean, oh. just like going into a jam with all guys and just playing, doing her thing, and like going to the depot or whatever, just down to try everything. Nice. What, uh, like, what instruments do you guys all play? Like, outside of what you do for ragdolls? I play guitar, I sing a lot. That's like my main thing, and I do that for Cat Sensei. And yeah, um, well, I've been playing drums for years, been taking it more seriously probably in the last half year, and like with meeting Naomi and wanting to be like a drummer for the band, like, okay, like, let's lock and load and like, get her fundamentals good, get, get pretty decent at drumming and, you know, I was actually playing righty and then like a month and a playing for Ragdolls is like, you know what, I'm a lefty and then I was having trouble doing certain fills because leading with my left hand, I was trying to teach myself to lead with my right hand and it was like not happening. And then I just decided one day when I was practicing, just switch the kit lefty and, and then I was like, whoa unlock something there and then just playing drums made way more sense for me from that point on too and yeah going up from there so oh yeah what about you guys do you play any other like instruments or anything um i do a little bit of bass not like it's not my main one i mostly just like dabble around and kind of like if i want to see what sound will complement the um like electric guitar, I also do piano, which I started off with when I was like six, but then when I started playing guitar around like 13 or so, then I kind of put that on the back burner. But now I really like it for like songwriting purposes. And then lately with Chazzy, I've been like dabbling with drums, but that's just, just been fun. But yeah, mostly um, electric guitar. She's my love. She has a name? <laughs> um, this one is Violet. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I, I bought it during the time we were doing the um, during the 
cover Violet by um, Hole, and she's a big in inspo for me, Courtney Love, so it just made sense to call it, and it's also one of my favorite groups, so. It is a very beautiful name, I think especially for guitar. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then, like, do you do any other, like, instruments or anything? I'm definitely most comfortable on bass, um, but every now and then, um, I'm asked to play, like, synth or drums. Uh, okay. And I'll try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm mostly playing on bass. Oh, and I, um, I do some singing, too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and, I heard you sing. And a little bit of production. You're True, showing us little stuff yeah. on the computer. Rachel oh. Wizzino. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess that's another thing I could say for myself, too. I also oh, like, produce. I have some I like electronic music out, too. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, what is that under? Like, what name? Inner Seeker. One word. Not ER at the end, just or. Inner Seeker. Inner Seeker. Just R. Just R. It's me that blocked me in. I was like, has there been pants in front of this camera the whole time? And I was like, that doesn't... It's not logical. Take two. Okay. So, what are your guys' like, in a perfect world, like, what do your, like, futures look like? Are you gonna, like, do you want to be doing music full-time? Do you want to be doing it, like, fully in a band, or do you want to have bands and solo stuff going on? Are you still going to be here in, like, Baltimore? What does the future look like for each of you? In a perfect a world. Question. I don't, honestly, I think about this a lot, and I have no idea how it's going to um, look like, but ideally, I would be doing something artistic. That Honestly, everyone's, every artist's dreams is to be paid for the art that they do. Um, I really like writing, so that's probably going to be a big thing for me and get to do that a lot with ragdolls because, you know, songwriting and stuff. But, yeah, and honestly, just ideal world. We're all just making art and playing so people enjoy it. It'd be really cool to go on tour at some point. Yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely. Um, ragdolls are trying to go on tour. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. ragdolls on tour. Hell yeah. Trying to get out there. That's probably our most, like, most attainable goal short term yeah yeah just like honestly to just like fully realize like the vision that's yeah. the ideal like that's really just the goal i'm gonna be trying to do that until we die yeah until you die <laughs> that's the like goal hell yeah yeah, yeah. on the gravestone yeah. we achieve the vision yeah right. how old are you guys by the way like i have like no idea how old you guys are i'm 26 26 22 23. 26, 23. How's Logan? He's also 23. Also 23. Nice. Okay, so we got like the mid-20s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bit band dad. Oh, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Thanks. I'm a baby. Yeah, I'm a baby. That's pretty cool. So... Baby <laughs> do, you, do you guys feel like you have a song right now that like really captures like the vision or sound of ragdolls? I mean all of them, right? But I think we're like hit wise, like I think that really maybe first thing we'll get to listen to right now is like Callus or Remedy. And Callus, by the way, we should be out shortly. I guess we talked about that. And hopefully Remedy too. We're recording a bunch of singles at the Watermelon Room. Shout out to Garrett at the Watermelon Room. Yeah, true. Yeah, I feel like Cal's kind of feels like, like even though we've been so uh, like new, Cal's feels like early ragdolls, doesn't it? Kind yeah. of, and uh, because like I kind of started that with before I met you guys, but then Remedy, I feel like we all worked on it together, so in some ways, so I feel like that one more feels like ragdolls. Yeah, I feel like we have some songs in the works that are gonna be a little bit more representative of yeah. all of us because, um, like. You two kind of had some originals before, like, Logan and yeah. I came into the band, and now we're working on stuff all together, sure. which has been really fun. Yeah. Nice. What are, like, the kinds of roles that you guys play when you're making songs as a band? So, like, you do, like, the, the lyrics and stuff? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, um, usually there's, like, um, riffs going on, and then, um, I don't know, I feel like every song also, like, takes a different shape. Um, trying to like not or kind of find out what works for us in the ongoing process, I guess. But yeah, um, we, usually I do the 
drugs and stuff. And uh, for Remedy, me and, uh, or, yeah, Remedy, me and Chessy were like figuring out chords and stuff. I had a, the first riff and then we figured out the chorus. Just good because like, I feel like I'm less uh, proficient at um, figuring out chords and like he's like that, but then better at like soloing and stuff. So, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Compliment each other. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> nice, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We were doing some jams too as a True, band. We yeah. really honestly have to pull this out of like the archives and like fun. re create those. True. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like I'm still very much like a beginner songwriter in terms of like bass parts and things. Mm -hmm. um, so I get a lot of inspiration from Logan and Chesney for like bass parts. Mm -hmm. At least right now, until I surpass you guys. Oh, yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. Watch out. Oh, oh. Yeah. Like ten years down the road, you're gonna like Google rag dolls and be like, bass player murders her baby <laughs> yeah. to steal their power. <laughs> <laughs> like you're planting the seed right here. I you heard it here first, folks. That's some juicy tea right there. Juicy tea. Yeah, <laughs> Do you? Would you guys say that you have? Uh, I mean, other other than these two lovely people, do you guys have any like creative inspirations? Yeah, I have a lot of creative inspirations, like just just music musically and like also just like other inspirations, just like getting inspiration from life, from emotions, from like people, like artists I looked up to, like Courtney Love, Saint Vincent, which others. You know, what are you guys? I mean, recently I've been really loving David. Um, he's like a David. Spotify musician. He has some slappers. Um, I think drumming wise, just like punk stuff like Nirvana, just like where you see people just bringing energy the and just the garden. Yeah, the garden's a huge one. Like um, Fletcher Shears, yeah, he's pretty amazing. And like, that's like a good, that's actually a pretty big drumming role model for me. I like just being at his level and watching the way he plays drums and how he's creative with it and just like going nuts. So, yeah. Nice. What about for you? I am really inspired by just like the Riot Girl genre in general. Riot Girl. Like, that's what got me into music um, is just like realizing that I can express um, my political opinions and kind of like internal outrage against the patriarchy like through music which right. is really yeah. cool so um i originally got into it with sweeter kinney who's one of the og riot girl bands um and now i listen to a lot of cherry glazer which um That's like we all one, have yeah. like a lot of really similar tastes um and i also really like the um like the lyrics of uh, Tierra Lack. I think that oh, yeah. her music is so inspiring and I want to try and write a lot like that, but it's, you know, I'm getting there. <laughs> Trying yeah. to emulate, you know. Nice. Hell yeah. Do you guys, when you, when you're like singing your songs and stuff, or is it more that you're just trying to get people to feel an emotion or are there messages that you want them to take away from the sound? Like, is there... Do you feel like there's like a, a point to the music, or do you just like doing music for music's sake? Like, how do you guys feel? A little bit of both, honestly. For lyrics, I feel like um, a lot of it um, is like kind of trying to figure out my own emotions or like something. Because Joan Didion was one of my favorite um, authors. Would always say that she writes to kind of like figure out like what she's like thinking and like. You know, and like that the the story like comes alive as you write it. So I yeah. feel like I try to, you know, I don't really think too much about what I'm getting into, but also just you know figure it out as you go along, you know, and then yeah. It's like a like a self discovery. Yeah, it'll like speak for itself after. Like it's interesting hearing how you guys, uh, um, what you guys were saying that Callis was out. I was like, oh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, but um, but then I was like thinking about it in a different way, but then that also works too and so there's some truth to that so. yeah and then i think like with writing music in general is like a lot of it is like trying to materialize certain emotions like these deep emotions that we all feel that like you know the best way to convey those and connect over those emotions is like and experiences through music That's true. So. yeah for me it's really about connection um, like I'm not 
biggest fan of playing music by myself. Like, I don't often pick up the bass and play on my own, which is something I'm working on, but um, it's like when I'm playing with other people that I really enjoy, um, like, actually playing music together and feeling the lyrics and the melodies, and um, of course it's always fun when there's an audience, you know, they're playing along to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's Oh yeah, yeah. It, it it definitely feels really different, like doing music alone. Mm -hmm. Like I made music alone for a really long time, and then like coming to Baltimore and like being able to connect with people over music is like a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. I think that they they really amplify each other. You know, it's like when the crowd get excited, you want to work on your crafts, you make better stuff for the crowd or for the people you're performing with. It's definitely, it's a nice. A nice little, a nice little loop that happens, I guess. It's a nice, like little feedback system, you know, yeah. like Hell feeding yeah. off the energy of the crowd, a little, like taking that into consideration with our directions. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Nice. I had thought of a question while you were talking, Rachel, and I'm trying to walk through my thoughts. You had talked about connecting with people, mm -hmm. and I was thinking about. A connection that I have with you, Shezzy, because you also studied audio engineering. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. What was so like? What was that like? Was that like a college or was it like an internship kind of thing? Like, what it, did you do? It was in college, uh, CCBC Community College, right around here. They have an audio engineering program in Essex, and I went to that. I almost finished it, but then like I moved and my address got messed up, and it was like two classes away. I was like, all right, whatever. But I mean. Still, the classes were super helpful, and I've been producing and like mixing and stuff since I was like 16. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. How did you feel like it was a good educational experience, or do you feel like you've learned more on your own? Both. I mean, a lot of those things you can learn on your own. It's nice to have like classes, like foundational knowledge. Like, you took a music theory class, music business class, and like um, mixing, mastering classes. There was a thing like we had to make a scene all out of as a like, a folly artist, so just like talking, dialogue, and things happening. So I kind of made this whole like audio um, scene of me running away from like the cops and like hiding and then driving somewhere with my friend who's waiting in the runaway car. And then like we like open up this like sewer thing, wheel grid, great. <laughs> Great, great, yeah, great. Uh, and then yeah. we like disappear, and the cops great. are running around looking for us upstairs. And it's like, you know, we just like recorded random sounds and like got everything done, and, like just put it together. So that was really cool, actually. And I recorded bands. Actually, Eli's band. I recorded Eli's band there for one of my classes. Oh, that was pretty cool. His yeah. old band, um, Elk City Ghost Tour. Yeah, that was really fun. We did a live recording and just like isolated everyone. Eli, uh, Grant, the other guitarist who played with Inner Seeker for a long time too, and their drummer and everything, so that was really fun. Yeah, I'm off track, I don't remember what the class <laughs> But yeah, the classes were great, and on my own too, just like, honestly, guitar, a lot of it was studying music theory, and then just getting on a guitar and throwing it around. I'm kind of lazy, don't learn like a crazy amount of covers usually, it's just like, whatever I can just stir up, so that's kind of how I got started. Nice, that's pretty cool. Did, did you guys, did you, both of you guys go to college also? Nice, so how were your experiences with school? Sure. Um, so I studied philosophy and sociology. Oh, sick. In undergrad. Hell yeah. Um, and then I recently graduated from Hopkins for uh, my master's in bioethics. Holy um, fuck. So I, I have like big. a pretty strong background as like an academic. I, I really enjoy, um, Discourse and <laughs> <Yeah. Feel that. laughs> shit like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess it just helped me um, learn to communicate with people and um, try to learn different perspectives and things like that because um, that's basically at the center of what philosophy, sociology, ethics is is just um, learning about how people interact with each other and how to communicate. So I think that. Um, I try to incorporate that into my art a little bit. Nice. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. And then, also, I just want to reiterate, 
That's badass. It's very <laughs> fucking awesome that you got your masters. That's like a really so big badass. accomplishment. Yeah. I'm Especially graduating, um, next month, actually. Like the actual graduation is oh. happening. So that'll be cool. Oh, COVID canceled it. <laughs> right. COVID canceled it. Mm-hmm. Fucking COVID, man. All those COVID little thingies running around in the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually went to a lot of jam houses. There's like two different jam houses. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of jam houses in Baltimore that are really cool. There's four flights that happen every Sunday. Um, there's this place called Sound Factory. Um, yeah, with Dugan as well. That had really cool jam events. But a lot of that stuff ended with COVID. And a lot of those people moved away and kind of sucks. But yeah, I know a few jams at the Watermelon Room, but there's nothing like super consistent that happens like that anymore, besides maybe the, the Depot. So. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, I will circle back to the Depot. First, I wanted to ask Rachel, do you have like any favorite or like big things that stuck from you from like your philosophy studies? Like, were there any any things that you feel like have become like a part of your life at all? Or did it feel purely like removed from you? Um, for me, it was a very personal um, discovery kind of thing. Um, it really helped me kind of learn how to, how to figure out um, my own personal beliefs about the world and things like that. Like I found out I'm very into existentialism, absurdism, um, a little bit of nihilism, you know, yeah. sprinkle that in there. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of was able to frame how I look at the world, and um, I think that that's been really important, and I got better at trying to explain to people my point of view, and um, yeah, just, I think I got better at communication, which is really important to me because I my main goal in life is just to connect with people and um, share experiences that is a very I think it's a very good main goal to have definitely beats making money mm-hmm. that's a really good school Fucking experience yeah, yeah I, I, I think I enjoyed it because I was originally actually a neuroscience major oh, but fuck. Um, oh god yeah, God damn. I, I have a lot of, <laughs> big brain. I have like a lot of health issues, like chronic illness. So I could not keep up with the workload, especially at the time I was like an honor student. So it was just too much. So I switched over to philosophy and sociology, and that was a lot more palatable for me. Um, I really like instead of like writing chemistry equations, I was really into just like writing papers. I know for some people it's the opposite. But. So, like, your medical stuff, does it make it difficult to, like, go to musical events at all, or...? Yeah, yeah, so I, I'm very open about it. I have chronic migraines. Oh, um, okay. Which are actually just, like, um, 24-7, like, nonstop, which is kind of hard for people to understand. But, um, yeah, like, usually after a show or even a practice or something, I'm, like, wiped out for the rest of the night and um sometimes even the next day i need to just like take a break and relax um but yeah earplugs are definitely helpful for that because um loud noise can definitely like be a trigger for me was it was that like always the thing or did it develop as you got older um it just like kind of happened one day when i was young so i'm just you know trying to learn how to live with it and music has been a really big help because i'm Especially like lyric writing, just trying to again sort out those emotions and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that uh, it definitely sucks. Like that sucks you have to deal with that, but it's um, it it shows a lot of strength that you're still like doing these kinds of things, even though they can they can trigger that. Like that's um, commendable. Good job. No yeah. star. Game, so. star. You're still pretty like active and like. The vault yeah. yeah, I mean, like, like I said pressure. earlier, like I was literally in bed all day before coming here, and then I was like, okay, time to, time to go out into the world. So nice. I gotta rest, and then I can have my fun. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, circling back to the depot. Wait, uh, can I say something? No. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, go um, ahead. No, we never answered about oh. college. Oh, yeah, college. Uh, college. Yeah, yeah, college. Yeah, 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 Educate okay. me on your education. <laughs> no worries. Um, Shame on me. <laughs> Um, yeah, I went to college at GW, um, 
undergrad, did public health and international affairs, did a little double major action. Don't know why. I was like, I was in like an overachieving, like, say that kind of dwindled after COVID. And then I was like, my priorities changed, I guess. Like, uh, but it was really cool. But I didn't really love the jobs that it led to. I really like public health and like learning about like mostly like history and kind of like how like certain um, like communities were treated and um, stuff. But I feel like I just want to be more stuff and I wasn't really interested in clinical settings or anything um more into like social work and things like that um and then international affairs that was a phase um that uh yeah but then I kept it because I was like I'm so close might as well just finish it and like add on another one like yeah but now I'm a teacher which has nothing to do with um well it kind of has a little bit to do with public health because like health education makes sense but yeah kind of random <laughs> nice you gotta teach those kids not to pick their noses yeah exactly hell yeah yeah <laughs> teaching kids how to rock i'm imagining in my head it's like school of rock like you're up there with jack black like, <laughs> yes. i carly get up here and sing some songs yeah, yeah. hell yeah Literally. nice education depot um how did you guys like find the depot? Like, how did you guys get linked into that whole thing? I used to work with Eli. He's the one who introduced me to the whole Baltimore music scene, um, and he started running that um, probably a year or two into me knowing him. So just started going. Just a place I went to a lot to play. You know, it's like full band setup. It's not something you find often for open mics. So been there a lot and tried out a lot of different things it's been like five or six years of me going there too on and off i learned about it from reddit actually because huh? i was well when i first moved here i got like kind of just like wanted to um without going outside to figure out where like um where all of the artists and musicians of baltimore were hanging out and so and the only way to really ask those questions is to go to reddit so and then they're like the depot and stuff and then they're like go to like local shows so then uh i mean then i met shezzy and stuff and he was already going to the depot so then we just went to the depot together but yeah reddit you got all your answers there hell yeah what's this weird <laughs> word on my belly button yeah, cancer <laughs> i'm gonna die no, reddit's awesome i yeah. scroll way too much way yeah. too much so you were going to Reddit, you found out the depot, the open shows. How yeah, do you... and then I was like, okay, I, I should go to like local shows. And I went to a local show, and I met Shezzy the second time I went to um, the side door, this um, small venue. It's like... Northeast Baltimore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? Nice. I feel like that was a weird response that I said. I said okay in like a very weird way. Like, <laughs> You're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> like, okay, so no, sorry. Sometimes Whatever. Just, uh, oh, well, it's like my brain is getting ready to say the next thing I'm going to say. So the thing that I actually say is like really like weird. And then the next one, I'm like all my mental energy was into the question. Um, how, Shezzy, how do you how do you feel that like the Debo has changed over the years? Like, do you think the spirit's kind of been the same or has it? Like evolved it's at all. grown so much. It just was like an open mic. I remember, yeah, it was just an open mic, and there'd be a featured set every every open mic too, playing like twenty minutes, half hour, and you know, did a few of those. Um, been in a lot of the showcase showdown. I've been at least like I think four or five, and the Ragdolls winning first was the first first place yeah so, got uh, second place with cat sensei too we, we were really close there but yeah um yeah and like just everything like the watermelon room being a part of it being part of the prize and then michael uh schwartz is new to um the depot pretty new i would say and like now he does the prize of a music video so it's crazy how like all these other like artists or creators are kind of tying to the depot it's just like this community it has like these like options that are offered and like prizes it's, like, really cool it's definitely come a long way nice yep that's what she said yep. <laughs> sorry <laughs> just it was sitting there i had to go for it so uh had so has it really felt like it's, it's been like a supportive experience like you guys doing ragdolls and doing music or have you faced any 
any kind of like opposition about like the kind of music you guys do at all? It's honestly been pretty supportive. Even like even in shows where um, I'm like very self critical about like mistakes that I've made, and then we'll come, they'll be like, "Awesome!" And like there's there's times where I've been like really out of tune because I don't know. I tune it, and then I suddenly get up there, and it's really out of tune, and, uh, and then play a whole song like out of tune, and then there'll be people be like, "Oh, I thought that was like a stylistic choice." I'm like, "Wow." Oh, like, you like that? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the only opposition... <laughs> there's been, like, some comment... Some comments... I know someone made, made a um, comment about... Uh, what was the word that they used? Um, a little shaky, was it? Oh, yeah. Was it? Yeah, with it, or something. Um, just a little um, back... But oh, yeah, next. Used for fuel. It's funny, though, too, because that guy, like, that comment about being shaky, I know you were kind of worked about. That same guy who made that comment, I'm not going to name anyone, but, um, yeah, um. Say the name. Say the name. there when we played as a two-piece. And he was was the first person. No, 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 no. no. You're dead to it. He was the first person who said we sounded good and that we had a good look and style. And then he was also, like, you know, like, kind of, like. Oh, like, are you guys gonna get a basis? And we're like, yeah, we're looking for a female basis. And that whole journey looking for, like, you, it also started. And, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the, the biggest issues in music is just, like, the lack of, like, women identifying musicians, mm-hmm. especially in, um, in, like, rock. And, you know, people say grunge is dead, but in, yeah, in grunge what? music, <laughs> um, like, there is just, like, um, not too many. Uh, women out there who mm-hmm. play music, um, or at least who just don't get like um, the support that they deserve, like the applaud that they deserve. So, you know, sometimes it is weird. Like you mentioned, you know, like going to a place to play and then you're like the only woman there. Like I've mm-hmm. experienced that before and um, it can be really nerve wracking. Um, especially since like I a lot of my music is very like feminist like the lyrics too so um sometimes when I bring up Riot Girl or things like that then people have a very kind of like shocked uh response like one guy was like oh so you want to like cut off everyone's penises and things like that and I'm like hell yeah sure yeah whatever dude like yeah he was like oh so you're like god hating and you want to cut off all the penises (laughs) I'm like okay that's funny that's like god lovers like circumcise themselves I don't know yeah it's like um... (laughs) you played yourself Jesus Christ what a guy Mm -hmm. well I mean I really wish I could have been there to support that man because, you know, all you God-hating women, like, out of the end. Imagine being a woman yeah. or a transgender woman. What? I know. Horrible. Like mm-hmm. your head off. <laughs> no one's safe. Hell yeah. Are you, I, I guess I've, it's never really come up, but are, are you guys all, like, cisgender or do you have any kind of, like, like different kind of, like, identifications that you use or anything? Uh, I use she-they pronouns. She-they pronouns. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I identify as a woman. Gotcha. Yeah. I identify as woman, but honestly, it kind of changes. Like, some days I'm feeling a lot more masculine. Some days I'm feeling feminine. Um, so, yeah, honestly, any pronouns depends on the day. Yeah. Like, one time I got called sir, and I was like, wait, I actually kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I turned around, and they are like, oh, sorry, ma'am. And I'm like, hmm, that's, that's happened okay. to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, just like he, 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 him, he, him. He, hey. He, hey. He, hey. He, hey. My friends are yeehaw. Yeah, my friends are yeehaw. I mean, I guess you could say she, because my name is Shazzy. I say she. I made that joke before Dewey Bows. Dewey Bows. Hell yeah, we love to see it. Nice. Um... I guess I think that covers a lot of the, the things I was... Maybe I should put my arm up. Um, a lot of the things that I was curious about, um, like having seen you guys over these past few months, are there are there any big, big things or big, like, ragdoll stories that, like, you really, like, want to share right now? Mm. That ragdoll haven't come stories. up? Ragdoll stories. Let's see. Oh, does that time we got drunk? Too drunk? <laughs> we... We. Yeah, we. Okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, wait. You're not saying we. We all collectively. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
think we will see in the footage. <laughs> we actually did record that entire set. That was really funny. <laughs> yeah. Oof, well. yeah. Somebody not pointing any fingers here. Got a <laughs> yeah, I got really drunk one day. I was like in my fields and drank a lot and was too messed up to play a co here. Coherently. Yeah. No, it was coherent it, for some. It, it's just that the songs lasted like one or two minutes longer than yeah. usual. You oh, just yeah, like, went into the song again. I like, would like forget the, the song structure and then I would kind of go through like the verse chorus cycle again and they were like, what the hell? Is <laughs> yeah, and to, we couldn't get your attention because you were just so into it that <laughs> Naomi had to go over and slap you. <laughs> you slapped me? I just light, like tap. I was just like, because I said it into the mic, too. I was like, Shazzy, like, come on. Yeah, I'm like, put in a smiling face to the crowd. You're like, he's with us. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and then he just kept going. We played along with it for a little bit. Then we're like, okay, Shazzy, someone's got to, like, really, yeah. like. <laughs> and I did all the songs a little over. Like, the song would stop, and then I'd go over for another bar. And, and then like, it's she on. And then we had a new song. We were working on a new cover and stuff and then um for the third one <laughs> rachel finally got attention you were like we're no that that was for the second one you were like we're doing school now and then you're like okay but then that one we did well and then chainsaw the door which was our other cover we were doing um you were still doing the beat for <gasps> school oh, yeah. oh that yeah. was rough that, yeah. <laughs> that was rough, rough. <laughs> And then after that, the best part is that Shezzy at the end goes, I feel really good about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah, you I said that. I knew said, I was playing the no, wrong No, you said like, that. Oh. You're like, that was cool. I was like playing the wrong game. Like, I don't know how to stop. No, I'm yeah. switching over. Like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Oh, I mean, a lot of, I feel like, is like fake it till you make it. Like playing the drums, I just like picked yeah. it up and I'm like, I'm gonna start playing the drums and like I'll just do it until I'm good at it. So yeah. still a long way to go. Honestly, I'm not very like disciplined and but yeah. were you asking for you discipline? Want. Huh? You want some discipline? <laughs> you gonna like, smack some sense to yeah. me. Smack me, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's why he slapped him on stage you're just giving him some discipline mm -hmm. like all of our stories though are like super fun like I feel like since we've started playing together we've become friends outside of the band yeah. and um, we hang out like all the time not even just playing music so it's been a really great experience nice yeah. hell yeah yeah I am um, that was the second time I saw you was that show <laughs> I remember it because I was like really? what is happening I was like oh, really I was like, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, I do not condone <laughs> violence. That's what I do not. <laughs> like, when, right when you say that, I'm going to cut to you slapping. Yeah, I, I, I do not condone. It was a lot tap, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. No, no, no. That, but yeah, that one, I was like, I don't know. But then, having seen you guys after that, especially, I was just like, oh, okay. It's kind of a weird night, I'm guessing. Because, like, every other show I've seen you guys has been, like, amazing. Oh, yeah. Dang. Yeah, you really saw us, like, grow. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And Depot's been home base for us a lot. I mean, you know, just go out and play the open mic. Mm -hmm. It's a consistent way, but we're trying to branch out now. We have the show coming up. Reverb, May 29th. Yeah. And then... May 29th, 19th. May 19th. And then yeah. another show June upstairs 16th. at the Crown, June 16th, mm -hmm. with Shift Meal. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be a great show, too. Excited. Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so we're starting to get some traction yeah. after the depot, which has been a really great sure. like supportive space. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool being in like the like the machine that's like, okay, you got first place and it's like now all right, now we have I to know. record. We're now like we have to think of the, the music video. Like yeah. The first yeah. Place, you know? We gotta fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. So I'm just gonna double check everything should be good. We are doing good, so Closing thoughts. Are there are there any messages you'd like to leave? Current fans, future fans, what what would you like to say to the fans before I let you guys go? Do your morning pages. Wake up, write three pages out. Don't even think about it every single morning. And stay tuned for Callus and Shark. Yeah, we're releasing Callus. For sure, and then we have some other singles in the works. We've got the shows, 
all of the Insta, that's all the, like, presence we have right yeah, now. Yeah, Rap Dolls music. Right. Listen to female artists. Yes. yes. Woman identifying artists. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like... yeah. And music video. <laughs> <laughs> that's sign language for music video, actually. Huh? Yeah, that's sign language for... Why was that? <laughs> music video. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're yeah, so you're the best. Guys, you guys rock. And now we interview you. Yeah. <laughs> Inter. Nothing recorded. Yeah. No. I got yeah. everything. Gotta get the whole thing. <laughs>